our King. Say it all. Yeah. Everybody say it all. Let the glory of the Lord, glory of the Lord, rise among us. Glory of the Lord, rise among us. of our King. Say it all. Yeah. Everybody say hello. Yeah. Let the power of the Lord. Let the power of the Lord. Let the praise of the Viking. Everybody say it all. Everybody say it all.
we come to worship. One more time, we come. Pray. We 
come to praise him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The devotion reading this morning will be coming from Matthew chapter 5, starting at the 17th verse on to the 19th verse. Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be <coughs> fulfilled. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Bow. Every heart look to heaven. Our Father and our God, as we come this morning, Father, we come to say thank you. Father God, we come to give you the praise, the glory, the honor that you so deserving. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this week past that you have blessed us, Father. And you enable us to come into your house this morning that we can say thank you. And so many started out with us this week. Father has gone home. But Father God, you give us another change that we can say thank you. You give us another change that we can call upon your holy name. Because Father, you is all we have. And we say thank you this morning for choosing us as your people. Give us a double determination, Father, to do your will. And Father God, as we come this morning in this service, we ask a special blessing upon our pastor this morning. Touch him this morning, Father, in a special way. Father, as he come to teach his people, and make sure that you, they know your word. Strengthen him, Father, Give him courage, give him wisdom, and give him knowledge. And we ask blessing upon his wife this morning, Father, that you would touch her, that she will continue to be a blessing to him. And Father God, we ask you bless our musician this morning. Bless our choir this morning as they open up their voice to sing your Zion song. Keep us, Father, in your care. And Father God, we come to say thank you and we come to give you the praise, the glory, the honor that you're so deserving. And Father God, as we continue this prayer, we wish that more, Father God, would open up and come to Bible class. We wish that more would open up and come to Sunday school, Father, where they can learn more of your word, Father God. Then we can come on Sunday morning and we can shout and we can sing glory to your name. Hallelujah, this morning, Father, you're worthy. You are so worthy to be praised. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. 
Jesus. Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He is worthy. Yeah. We pray. Sing it one more time. Praise. Every day you ought to pray.
that's a church of Jesus is there. He'll answer you. By and by. Please come to church, y'all. Don't be afraid. Just kneel and pray. Receive your blessing. I got mine. Everybody say, I got I went to church for a blessing, and I got mine. God said, it's going to be all right. Everybody say, pray, pray. I went to church for a blessing, and I got mine. Jesus is there. He'll answer you. By and by, please come to church, y'all. Just kneel and receive your blessing today. I got mine. Yeah. God said it's going to be. Pray, pray, I went to church, uh, yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Everybody, come on.
to bow down before him. Repent and thank him. Receive. Hey, come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on.
Good morning, Providence. I'm glad to be here. And whenever you find yourself in the house of the Lord, that was a blessing. I can truly say that being my family has been blessed. And I also reflect on the days that you and Brother Bruce Bryant and I used to sit and talk and sing. Fall River and Jerome, wherever he went, and uh, try to look up to the name of the Lord. So thank you for having me this morning. Good morning. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been back, so thank God. Um, thank you for all your prayers during this journey. Um, I'm in New York right now, so I'm just happy to be home, happy to see everybody, happy to see my family. <laughs> Not because I've been so faithful, not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to provide my every need. You were there when I was lonely. You were there in all my pain. Guide in my footsteps, shelter from the rain, and it was you who made my life complete. You are to me my everything, that is why I sing. Jesus, Jesus, I love you because you care. Because you care. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. If you weren't there. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you because you cared for me. Because you cared. I couldn't imagine. You weren't, there. you weren't there, you are the joy of my salvation, you're the peace in my storm, oh Lord, your loving arms around me, protect me from our home, you are Alpha and Omega. 
Lord, you're the beginning and the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're my strong tower, my dearest and best friend. And it was you who made my life complete. You are to me my everything. That is why I sing, Jesus. Come on, say, because you care. Because you care. And Lord, I couldn't imagine. God, if you weren't there. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Because you care for me. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Yeah, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Yeah, Jesus. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Because you care. Because you care. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Come on, say, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Yeah. Because you care. Let's go higher. You say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Because you died for me on Calvary. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Yeah, Jesus, I love you. You want to lift your hands and say, Because. For your grace and your mercy towards me. Lord Jesus. Yeah, because. I tell you that sometimes I wonder where he is when trouble comes. I've had trouble, and I'm sure you've had trouble. But in your midst of all your trouble, 
Just know that God is still there. And he's still listening to hear what you're begging to plead for help. I thank God for the opportunity that this tremendous pastor has offered unto me respect to the president and my friend, Pastor Willie Smith, and certainly recognition to Sister Smith, all the clergymen that have assembled here in this awesome place of worship. And this is an awesome place of worship. We come here to worship God and to give God praise, not to give God any burdens or anything, but to give God praise for the things that he's already done. He's done so much that I just can't tell it all. So I thank God for the opportunity that has rendered unto me on this morning. Give an honor to God who is the head of my life, second to all of you, the administrators of this awesome church. I would that each and every one of you would come with me to a few, few verses of, of scripture that you will find in the Old Testament. It Come with me to Psalms 124. Very familiar scripture. Some of you don't know where it's at, but you've said it, I'm sure. I'm sure, because I've said it many times. Uh, Psalms 124, beginning at verse 1, and I'm reading the King James Brendan. Say amen when you're there. Okay. Psalms 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our souls. The, then the proud waters had gone over our soul. But thanks be to God. Bless be the Lord who had not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as bird out of the snare of the flowers. The snare was broken and we are escaped. Our help. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. For a few verses, for a few moments, I would that each and every one of you would pray with me. The Lord is our source of help. Our subject is the Lord is our source of help. My brothers and sisters, I've watched you this morning come into this sanctuary and joyfully celebrated something that God had done for each and every one of you. I see how you gathered in the front of this altar, and it reminds me of the times when I was in the clubs, and I'm sure you was in the clubs, and they had a second line dancing, and you know how you do the four steps where you turn and go to the right and you turn and go to the left and you go forward and you go back. You was having a jolly good time in the club. But it's good to see you all standing right here in this place telling God thank you for another day. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for another opportunity as long as God give me breath in my body and activities of my limb, I don't mind telling God, thank you, because he's been so good 
He's been so good. He's really been so good. And I wasn't always that good, but God still was good to me. My brothers and sisters, permit me to say that this scripture should encourage all of us in our times of despair, in our hour of need, in our times of sorrow, should overshadow us. We don't know what to do when you don't know what to do, when you don't know where to go, when you don't know who to turn to, and you don't know who's on your side, there is a place that you can go that I know personally. Let everything in the house say, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, if it had not been for the Lord who gave his life for you and I, where would we be? Somebody need to know where you need to be. If it had not been for him standing up in my place, giving his life in my place, I wouldn't know where I would be. Let the church say, if it had not been, for the Lord on my side. Somebody know that I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood of the land. So I say to you, let the redeem of the Lord say so. My brothers and sisters, if you trust and obey, help me Holy Ghost, if you trust and obey, God will surely make a way if you believe that, then you ought to know that the redeem of the Lord really ought to say so. To those who don't know the Lord, I say to you, just keep on living. And one day God will speak to your soul like he spoke to mine. It was on a Thursday evening when I was on converted on Wellam Quarters. On a church that sit back in the can field. And God spoke to my soul. And I said, Lord, here I am. If you want to change me, I'm willing to change and become more like you. And ever since that day, I don't know about you. I could tell you about my day. You can talk about your day. But right now, I'm telling you about my day. And God surely spoke to my heart just like he spoke to yours, 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 and even the ministers here. My brothers and sisters, it never ceases to amaze me how so many people can go to the sporting events and give praise to a football game. They will stand and they will shout with great excitement when their team scores. Oh, and then come to church and you can't say a word for the Lord who woke you up this morning. You can't say a word for the one who started you on your way. You can't say a word for the one who gave you the activity of your limbs, clothed you in your right mind, gave you health and strength, and allowed you to come to his house of worship. Help me. Come to his house of worship, and you can't say amen. Brothers and sisters, I've seen that. That many people go to these football games, and some people watch it on TV. And they act like they're right there. They act like they're running. <laughs> Help. They're right there. But brothers and sisters, if you believe this, what I read in your hearing, there are three points. Many things in this particular scripture 
Psalms 124. But I only see, and I'm only going to talk about three. And if you would allow and indulge me, I pray that you will be blessed by this message. And you can go home to your fried chicken, your baked chicken, your roast beef, your pork roast, and potato salad, and green <laughs> vegetables are waiting for you as a feast. But before we do that, allow me to give you the spiritual urges to tell you what God has said. Point number one, the magnitude of the dangers and the stress that David, who wrote this scripture, was under when he was stressed by the Philippine, Philistine. You can appreciate that there existed a prior confrontation. And the time had major danger and tremendous distress on Israel at this time. The record tells us that in many numbers were closed, there was a multitude of numbers that overshadowed the Israelites. And I'm sure that there's some among you that believe when problems is overwhelming you, you have a bad or you have a discouraging feeling that you just can't make it. It's bad enough when things are bad, but it's bad and worse when things don't get better. And you find yourself saying, Lord, what have I done? What am I doing that I deserve to be in this predicament? But brothers and sisters, you're not the only one. Because God is still on the throne. And he's listening for your confirmation and your comp communication to tell him, Lord, I need you. My brother, and if nothing else, if nothing else happened in your life, then you can say thank you, Jesus, for the things that you've already done. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing right now. Thank you, Jesus, for the things that you're going to do in my future. The magnitude of this situation gave David and the people of Israel no hope. And when you don't have no hope, then you lose the confidence in having a victory. But let me tell each and every one of you, God is no shorter than his word. And victory really is yours. If you put it in the hands of the Lord and leave it alone, you don't have to worry about the problems that you have. Secondly, the Holy Spirit urged me to mention the glory that David gave to God at their victory and at their deliverance. My brothers and sisters, when God comes to see about you, when God come to answer your prayer, give him glory. Amen. When the Lord opened doors that never should have been opened, give him glory. When God destroys your enemies and your backbiters, give him glory. When God lifts you up off your sick bed, give him glory. When God give you a new job and a new position, give him glory. When God give your children an attitude where they respect and honor you, give him glory. Give God glory for the things that he deserves because God do really do deserve your praise and your glory. Brothers and sisters, I don't mind giving God glory for the things that he's done for me. He's done so much for me. He brought me from a mighty long way. He fixed me when I was sick. He healed me when I was broke. He put money in my pocket. 
Anybody in God have put money in your pocket? Have God paid your bills? Have God give you deliverance? And have he healed you in your hour of need? God have done something for somebody here this morning that, that you ought to give God some praise. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mind telling you that some people and some things don't deserve praise. Some things that we give praise to don't deserve it. But God deserves our praise. If you want to know how much God loves you, look who God gave. If you want to know how much God loves you, look at what he gave. God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son. And God, I want you to know, God didn't have two or three sons that if he gave up one, he had one or two left over. When God gave us Jesus, he gave his only begotten son. And that says that whosoever, whosoever, and I was part of the whosoever. I don't know about you. I think you was at one time part of whosoever. Whosoever believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, I thank God for whosoever. Because whosoever include me and you. And it include everybody. And it don't exclude nobody. So God loves us. My brothers and sisters, as I come to my third and final point, David, in his victory, decided to give God some praise. David declared that the Lord is his source of help. He declared that he makes this declaration that the Lord was not only his source of help in the past, but God still is his source of help. My brothers and sisters, I've heard an old hymn that the hymn writer wrote, God has been our help in ages past, and I hope for years to come. I'll shelter in a stormy blast and I'll eternal home. Paul Jones wrote, I've had some good days and I had some bad days. But when I think things over, when I really think things over, I find that my good days outweigh my bad days. Then I don't need to complain. Douglas Miller says, the Lord is still my source of help because my soul is anchored in the Lord. The storms of life will come, but my soul is still anchored. The problems in life will still come, but my soul is still anchored. Anybody's soul is still anchored. Anybody know that your soul is still anchored in the Lord? If you're anchored in the Lord, then you don't have to worry about your problem. Because your problem is just a testimony of what God will do, what God has done, and what God intends to do for you. Somebody in this church ought to know what God is able to do. My soul. My soul, my soul, my soul is anchored in the Lord. And that is why I'm so happy to tell God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for getting up for me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, it's all right. To tell God thank you. It's all right to tell God I appreciate what you've done. It's all right to tell God I believe that you're able 
to come to my rescue. I know, I know, I know. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know what I would have done. Brothers and sisters, David, praise and give thanks to the Lord. And God is truly able to supply your every need. My brothers and sisters, as I come to a close, I would that you would remember that the Lord is your source of help. God truly is your source of help. I don't get excited when things happen. He is my source of help. And because he is my source of help, I can lay down at night and not worry about my problems because God is my source of help. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when my problems get me down and I don't know which way to go, I can turn to the Lord and say, Lord, you made me and you know everything about me. You brought me a long way and I'm still trusting, I'm still waiting, I'm still believing on your word. You promise never to leave me. You promise never to forsake me. You promise never to forget me. And I'm trusting on your word. And sometimes the struggles of life will tell you you don't have nothing to give God but God but God gave you life through his dying son who went on a rugged cross they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall they pierced him they whipped him all night long and God looked down on Jesus and they marched him up Calvary Hill they laid him on a rugged cross they put nails in his hand they put spikes in his feet he did that for me. They lift them high and they stretch them wide. He died. Didn't he die? He died. Didn't he die? Say yeah. 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 He died. But early, early, early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. If God have done anything for you, say yeah. If God have blessed you, say yeah. If God have raised you, say yeah. If God have saved you, Say yeah, he's all right, he's all right, he's all right, he's all right. I know, I know, I know, I know, he's all right. Say yeah, 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 in the morning, yes, in the evening. Yes, in the midnight, I tell God, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 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 yeah. God is your source of help. Anybody here knows that God is your source of help. Father, I, I stretch my hands to to thee no Anybody know that? Tell me where, where the shame I, I go. God bless you, the doors of the church. The door of the church is now open. It may be someone who know not God. This is your time. This is your hour to come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The spirit and the bride says come and let him that hear it says come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him come and drink from the water of life freely. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Today is the day of salvation, he said. When you hear my word, harden not your heart. He is speaking to someone this morning. He is standing, knocking at the door of your heart. Why don't you come? Tomorrow is not promised to you. May God bless you and forever keep you. Thank God for the word this morning. God is yes. our source of help. And that he is. Reverend, you enjoy the message. Allow me to be a little humorous. Somebody brought me an envelope. Somebody brought me an envelope. And I put it in my hand. And it was heavy. And I almost put it in my pocket. <laughs> and if it would have got in my pocket, it would have stayed there. I 
I'll call your name. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. And, and Kim. Honor the law with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy bond be filled with plenty.